Hey, uh, congratulations. Um, uh, what y'all do uh, are on Thomas being, uh, you know, just having Thomas, him being named the special teams player of the month and uh, the job he's done to affect uh, the opposing team drive starts. Well, I'll say, D-Lek, congrats to Thomas and that, the, our punt unit. You know, it takes all 11 guys to be able to put together that performance for that month, for the month of December, and being able to protect and cover to allow Thomas to do his job at a high level. So if you, you know, you speak to Thomas, he would say it's a team award when it comes to that punt team, being able to go out there and execute and flip the field for our, our put our defense in good field position. So congrats to those guys. And coach, how dangerous of a return man is Isaiah McKenzie? Well, they actually have two guys, you know, Isaiah McKenzie, quick, elusive, fearless runner. He could get east, west and north, south quickly with one cut. He'll catch the ball in traffic and get vertical, he, and obviously he does punt return and kick return. Had a big return, you know, uh, week one versus Pittsburgh, and he actually had a touchdown at the end of the uh, year last year versus Miami. So he's very dangerous with the ball. And then you have Marquez Stevenson, who's came came on as of late, uh, rookie out of uh, Houston that does a great job, you know, getting vertical with the football. He has really good speed, um, and he can get vertical in a heartbeat if you give him open seam. So it's a great challenge for us this week going against – their returners as if you know every week we go against these various returners but particularly this week versus these guys um great challenge for our, our coverage units and we look forward to the opportunity thank you coach thank you mike so marcus how are you how you doing mike hope you feel better man oh uh, dude this this thing sucks <laughs> sorry about that man it's, be, it's not your fault uh unless it is uh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i'm good mike. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm curious when a team pulls a, a fake punt like the Lions did on Sunday. Like how how often and how much can you actually prep for that versus it's just such a random and and almost rare occurrence that you just I I don't even know how to describe it. Like how do you, how do you approach that? Well, every week, Mike, we we work on various punt fakes making sure that we're sound, you know, on the perimeter for runs or interior, and then that we're staying connected to the gunners when it comes to, you know, passing plays. And then each and every week, we got to do our research as coaches, um, finding out what guys can throw the football or not, you know, having that prior relationship with the Lions, knowing that Jack can throw the football and they put worked with them last year. And obviously they did it versus the Rams. That was a huge emphasis going into last week. And we were, you know, we worked and we worked on those plays and we're prepared for those plays. It comes down to execution on our end and, and give props to Detroit being able to execute that that down. Um, we knew that the, those plays were coming and every week we're prepared for those type of plays, but they did a better job of executing on that play. So give props to Detroit and Jack Fox for, and Coach Fit for, you know, executing that play and extending the drive. But we have I mean, to that's our end. There's... There's, you know, the, there's the common theory in poker that there are tails. I think everybody knows that. And, and sometimes on offense and defense, you there are players that give away tails too. Can there be tails with special teams fakes? Is it almost sometimes easier to maybe pick that off because it, you know, is such a different scenario? Is that possible or is it is it harder? It, it varies week by week, opponent by opponent, player, you know, coordinator you're going against, player that you're going against. And I would say, too, that particular play, when you watch those punter passes to the gunners, those are hard plays to execute um, on the defensive end because, you know, your defensive back is playing as if he's he's covering a guy that's going to go make a play on the ball. So it, all it takes is for a little throw by. And if the, the punter throws a good ball, that's going to be a well-executed play on the punt team's aspect of it. So that play is one of the harder plays to kind of prevent. But for the most part, when it comes to like run plays or various schemes that teams run on punt fakes, as long as you're not giving them anything pre-snap, you know, any tells or defensively or punt return wise, then you should be in a good position and be sound. So, again, give props to Detroit doing a great job on executing that. But you ask our players, we knew that there was going to be some type of fake coming and we just got to be better at that. And the last thing I've got is, how do you feel this season's own, you know, you guys have gotten most of the way through the season. How do you, how would you assess your performance this year? How do you feel like that's gone your first year kind of really running a show? Um, there's all, every, every aspect I want to, I want to get better at 
every week we're really, you know, I take it a week by week. This week we're looking at, you know, being able to continue to put together all six phases, playing, you know, great complimentary football and being able to help our offense and defense in better field position. If you're, you know, I'm always hard on myself. I'm always looking to get better for our players and put, continue to put our betters in better positions and continue to put our betters in positions where they can execute and be able to uh, play at a high level and pl- perform at a high level to help our offense and defense in any way possible. So I don't necessarily put it like a grade on myself, but every week I'm looking and striving to get better for our players because that's why we coach. If there was no players, then we wouldn't have coaches. So it's a great opportunity for us as coaches in this building, myself and, and you know, in particular to – be able to put my best foot forward to help our guys out in any way possible. But again, it's a great challenge this week versus Buffalo. And I'm excited as well as our team and our players are excited for to go out there and put together a great game. Appreciate it. Thanks, Marquis. Appreciate you, Mike. Hope you get better. Scott. Thanks, man. Hey, Coach. Uh, I, I, I was curious, is, is there anything ab- about the way that, that Thomas punts that fits in well with how you guys like to, uh, how you guys like to uh, cover? Is, is there anything that he, that he does that fits in well with what you like to do philosophically? I think that you know Thomas does a great job of punting the ball directionally, getting the ball where it needs to get, you know, be placed at when it comes to direction and then having that good correlation of distance and hang time with it. Um, when it comes down to it, we can have the punt direction wherever it needs to go as long as we get it there and we're able to protect where that ball needs to go and then get the gunners and our coverage to get to where they need to go. So he does a good job of getting the ball out directionally and being efficient and effective with his technique and getting the ball off in a timely manner, which helps our protection. So and in, in all aspects, too, not only punting, too, but when it comes to understanding, too, he knows how the gunners are playing, how we're pr- protecting, and then overall how we're covering. So it's a kick and coverage, punt and coverage have to work together. There's going to be times where his punt might not be the best, but we cover it up with great coverage. There might be times where we can't get out of coverage the way we want to because the opponents are doing a great job block, you know, scheming us up. But the punt kind of overshadows that because of the great punt direction, location, and hang time. So it's a complimentary game when it comes to that, and it's – Great having Thomas in the room to be able to have that dialogue to talk about how we're going to cover, how we're going to protect, where we want the ball at versus various opponents. In what ways would you say that 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 uh, Avery Williams has gotten better over the course of this season? I think he continues just to get better reps and and then trying to make the most out of the opportunities given. Um, punt return and kick return it varies. There might be a week where we feel like, hey, that we have a you know a great opportunity for a big return, but based on the down and distance, you might not get to that play call. You know, in offense and defense, you no matter what, you're going to have a first and ten. You're going to have that on punt return. You don't know if you're going to have a fourth and long, or in the game you're going to have a you have two punt return opportunities, but it's around the middle of the field and it's fourth and two, fourth and three, and you can't really return. So making the most of those opportunities, and he continues to get better of his overall football IQ and football knowledge and understanding the game, understanding the, the type of punters and kickers that he's going against, because you know it's 18 weeks in the season, so he's going against various punters, various kickers various conditions, indoor, outdoor, and he's doing a great job of understanding those aspects of it as long and as well as securing the football. Because you can see when he has the ball in his hands, he's able to help us out and being able to be a part of flipping the field. But it takes all those other aspects and understanding the game, the full picture of the game, to put himself in that position to help the team. Do you feel like there is a uh, do you feel like there is a uh, a high ceiling for him? Uh, we we we've all seen his, his college numbers are off the charts, but mm-hmm. but uh, in the pros, do you think that that he has an opportunity to to uh, be a, a special player at this level as well? Yes, he, I'll speak with Avery and a lot of, with a lot of our players. Their our best days and their best days in this profession are yet to come. I mean, he's only played in he's he hasn't even finished his first season. So I'm not trying to sit here and project certain things, but his best days of playing in the NFL, I believe, are yet to come. And he's only going to continue to get better reps. And you see that within his play as a four-phase player. Thank you. Thank you. Josh? You're good. All right. Do you, you got any follow-ups? Uh, yes, Coach. Just that. Uh... 
Tyler Bass, I uh, see he had a couple misses from beyond 50, but uh, looks like he's having another solid year. What What's the cutoff point for him, and uh, how do y'all uh, try to go after I know they got one block on a punt block, too, so somebody's been able to give to the punt block team. You know, so Tyler. Two questions. Yeah, oh, no, you're good. You know, I, I'll start with uh, Tyler Bass. You know, he has a strong leg. Um, I got the opportunity to coach him in the Senior Bowl. In 2019, when I was with the Lions, uh, you okay. know, he, he played with Koo at Georgia Southern. Right. So their teammate, they were teammates there. Strong leg, great mindset um, for what he's doing out in Buffalo in those conditions and be able to oh. have the numbers that he has. He's doing a great job. Um, he's a good man. I think he does a great job with the opportunities given as a kickoff guy and as a kicker. And he, he has a great mindset when it comes to playing in that position, when it comes to short-term memory, being resilient, and still being effective on his kicks. And we look forward to the opportunity to go against him this week. But he continues to do a great job. And, again, it's only year two for him. So he's gonna, it's a great opportunity for us. And then when you talk about their punter, you know, they did have a punt earlier in the season that they gave up some interior pressure. And again, they're punting in Buffalo. And for those, they haven't had a lot of opportunities to punt in Buffalo because of how their offense is playing. But the opportunities that we get, we got to make the most out of it, whether it's, you know, returning the football or putting pressure on them, whatever the case may be. So we look forward to the opportunity going against their specialists when it comes to playing this Sunday in Buffalo. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Tanitra, do you have something? Yeah, Coach, can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you doing, Tanisha? How are you? Good. Right, thank you. Hey, and this is going to be a basic question, but I always like to hear your insight and your perspective in these situations. So obviously going from one week of playing in a dome environment to the environment in Buffalo where there's a 70% chance of snow and a low of 19, kind of your philosophy and approach, what is it on going into that environment? You know, whatever, the, one, having a good understanding of what we're going into and what the kind of environment that we're playing in. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the basic fundamentals, the lost stars of football, where you talk about catching the ball, you know, throwing the ball, punting the ball, tackling, getting off blocks. A lot of times those are the breakdowns that happen later on in the season when you're playing meaningful games or if you're playing in certain conditions. So just having a game plan, having an understanding of the, the conditions that we're playing with when it comes to our kicking and our punting, also, to situational football, that's going to be a big play in it. But with all that being said, Tanitra, it's the basic fundamentals. Getting off blocks, kicking, tackling, catching, all those little things. Um, ball security, attacking the football. We got to make sure that we're doing a great job when it comes to those basic fundamentals so we can win those situational plays, whether it's returning a short punt, returning a short, a short kick, understanding the wind pattern in the stadium when we're punting, kicking, when are we kicking field goals, when do we decide to punt, what direction we're going to punt, all those little things. And then when we're covering too, like having good foot placement, when we're running downfield, have playing with a good base, you having our feet underneath us when we're getting off blocks, when we're blocking, all those little things matter because you could look at a return and be like, oh man, that was, they had a return for 25 yards, but that return could have been a touchdown if a certain guy would have had his base underneath him, had good footwork and had good hand placement. And it's all based on the conditions. So we got to do a better job and do a great job understanding conditions, playing with better fundamentals when it comes to those type of conditions this weekend. And coach, the league is obviously starting to take notice with Josh Harris getting the nod for Pro Bowl and obviously with Thomas Morstead getting the nod for uh, Player of the Month on special teams. But what have you seen has been maybe the biggest improvement of your unit maybe from the beginning of the season to now? I think we, our guys in each other just continue to – get better with reps you know you're only again when you go into a football game you're guaranteed a kickoff and a kickoff return that's it so you don't know if you're going to be playing five reps in, of special teams in the game or you might have 35 reps of uh, special teams reps so whatever the case may be our guys are doing a better job of being in the present so no matter what the down and distance is no matter what situation our field goal team in field goal block punt whatever the case may be our guys are doing a good job of being in the present and being better with our transition from offense defense to special teams and if you're if you're able to win that battle when you're doing a great job with transition it's only going to put you in a better position to win that down and again we only have one down at a time there's no second down on special teams so being in the present our guys are i feel like are doing a better job of when being in the present so we can have a, a better opportunity to win that current down Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Mike? 
Yeah, hey, Marquise, I had one other thing for you. With the COVID issues that y'all are dealing with at the moment, how does that affect maybe what you're able to do both during a week in practice, on special teams during a week in practice, and then also theoretically in a game? Because even though some of those guys aren't necessarily core special teamers, it would mm -hmm. seem like that's probably some sort of trickle down as yes. well. Yes, sir. Mike, there is a trickle down. And going into the, you know, going into the season and coming here, part of our special teams philosophy is small, small menu, big understanding. Because, you know, every week our, our, our roster is changing. The evolution of our roster changes from week one to week two, week 16 to week 17. So each and every week we got to make sure philosophy wise we're small menu, big understanding. So we can plug and play guys at various positions so they can go out there and play with high effort. And, and you know, play with a great attitude and use the proper technique to help our offense and defense win the ball game. All right, guys. There's, okay. That's unfortunately that's all the time we have, Mike. I apologize. Coach Ragone is right here. Uh, so he'll be up in just a second. Thank Thanks, you. Marquise. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach.